You know, if you think about it, the Creeper is kinda DC's Deadpool. No, wait, Freakazoid is DC's Deadpool. Does DC own Freakazoid? Maybe it's Ambush Bug. That's it, the Creeper is DC's Ambush Bug. Nailed it. Because it's Thursday. Hello Watchtower Database and welcome back to The Vanishing Point, the only bi-weekly YouTube show that dissects small chunks of the DCAU timeline to answer questions you probably never even thought to ask. Recently, while looking up production art for Batman the Animated Series, I came across this character model for the Creeper. Notice I said Batman the Animated Series and not the new Batman Adventures. You can tell because not only does this picture show what the Creeper parenthesis Jack Ryder close parenthesis could have have been, but if you look real close, it seems as though this model is sitting on top of the script for the long lost Vampire Batman episode that was going to feature Nocturna. It's a really small image and hard to read, so if James can't blow it up in the edit to make it look readable, you can just take my word for it. Also, John Trumbull on Twitter told us that it's in Cinefantastique magazine, so you can take his word too. Oh, and also, Paul Dini mentioned in Batman Animated that there were initially plans to use the Creeper in the show's original run. So there's that. So after seeing that, it may not surprise you to learn that originally the Creeper, parenthesis Jack Ryder, close parenthesis, had also been planned to take on a larger role in the new Batman adventures back when it was in early planning stages as Batman Gotham Knights. Of course, this isn't to be confused with the 2008 film Batman Gotham Knight, which takes place in the Nolan film's continuity in between Batman Begins and The Dark Knight. While we did end up with fan favorite episode, Beware the Creeper, I'm always left wondering what it would have been like had we gotten more of our yellow skinned wacky man. And dag nabbit, Michael Brent sure is wondering too. So today I figured why not look into just what the man, the myth, the creeper, parenthesis Jack Ryder, close parenthesis, was doing in between his origin in the late 90s up to his initiation in initiation, and maybe even beyond? Armed with the knowledge that there were plans to use the Creeper, parenthesis Jack Ryder, close parenthesis, in a larger capacity, I'm sure you may not be surprised to find out that Beware the Creeper actually wasn't the first time the character showed up in the DCAU. If you want to be technical about it, Jack Ryder first showed up in Cold Comfort, just as an average reporter. But for once in my life, I don't want to be technical because Cold Comfort isn't what I was talking about. In fact, months before his on-screen origin story, the Creeper, parenthesis Jack Ryder, close parenthesis, debuted in his DCAU form in the pages of Adventures in the DC Universe, a comic that served as a melding between the current DC Universe of the comics and the world of the animated Batman Superman adventures that had still yet to become the DCAU, as artist John Delaney explains. We were fortunate with Adventures in the fact that uh, because it existed in the DC Universe, not in the Bruce Timm or the Paul Dini Universe, um, we can do whatever. So we never, nobody really stopped us from doing anything. I did Booster Gold, we did a Blue Beetle, and did all that stuff, right? So and we, we did the question, and you know, it was awesome, right? You know? Was it but originally we, intended to be in the like animated Well, they're just, series that world didn't, didn't really exist yet. There was Batman, yeah. and, and, and Superman, right? Superman. So they, they had, they only just done that crossover, so they, they weren't really building a big universe yeah. yet. Superman started to, they started to introduce the new gods and all that kind of thing, right? But uh, yeah, initially it was these two separate worlds. So the only way to do, you know, advance to the DC universe was, well, let's keep it as current because they, DC wanted it to be a springboard for young viewers or young readers to jump into the modern universe, right? So it was very firmly set in the modern universe. As a result of their melding of worlds, there are a lot of stories that don't really fit within the continuity that Bruce Chem and company created. There will be a will it canon on the series eventually, but until we figure that out, at the very least, the creeper, parenthesis, Jack Ryder, close, parenthesis is appearing <laughs> appearance in issue number 17 actually fits pretty well into continuity, so long as you place it after his origin episode, of course. The story focuses on a news reporter who's sprung the Helgramite from prison in order to gain their assistance in unmasking Batman. But in order to keep his job, Jack has to expose Batman's identity first. As the Creeper, parenthesis Jack Ryder, close parenthesis, Jack and Batman figure out the connection between the two, leaving reporter Jack Ryder with a story that allows 
allows him to keep his job without exposing Batman. Now, if you're sitting there with a dumbfounded look on your face trying to figure out just who the hell the Helgramite is, I appreciate that you didn't switch tabs on your phone to Google it. We gotta keep that watch time up over here, so just, just stick here. Just stay on this video. Revisiting what John Delaney said about how Adventures in the DCU pulls from comics continuity, this issue serves as a sequel to The Brave and the Bold number 80, in which Batman and the Creeper, parenthesis Jack Ryder, close parenthesis, take on entomologist, that's a bug scientist, Roderick Rose, who essentially spliced himself with a grasshopper. Obviously, this exact story doesn't take place in the DCAU, but between the adventures issue and someone who sure looks like good old Helgi being part of the Legion of Doom, it seems safe to say that perhaps something along those lines happened in broad strokes. I mean, of course, the Creeper, parenthesis Jack Ryder, close parenthesis, would have been there for Helgramite's origin. After all, who but a lunatic would try to stop a giant super-powered bug man with his bare hands? <laughs> Hell yeah. Critters. <laughs> Moving back to less questionably canon material, yet still questionable if you're one of those folks that only cares about the TV shows, the Creeper, parenthesis Jack Ryder, close parenthesis, returns in Gotham Adventures number 58. While the on-screen side of the DCAU never followed up on Jack Ryder's maniacal laughter at the end of his origin episode, <laughs> <laughs> Gotham Adventures guest writer Dan Slott came in over four years later to pick up that thread. However, with Slott being the continuity nerd that he is, this issue not only serves as a sequel to that episode, but also to the last time we saw the ventriloquist, parenthesis Je wait. Wrong guy, just the ventriloquist. As I was saying, this issue serves as a sequel to both Beware the Creeper and Double Talk. While in Arkham Asylum's out therapy program, Arnold Wesker returns to crime. Jack Ryder, who hasn't been using his non-creeper fire patches, accidentally figures this out and attempts to expose Arnold while working his job at Wayne Enterprises the next day. Of course, this pisses Bruce off who pays Jack a visit later that night as Batman. The two wind up teaming up and come to find out that Arnold wasn't intentionally returning to crime, but was doing it all while sleepwalking. This leads to Arnold returning to Arkham and the creeper hanging out on a rooftop brawling with the lifeless dummy that is Scarface. And oh, hey, wouldn't you know it, Thursday is meatloaf night. What, the yellow skin guy is the only one who gets to do wacky stuff and I have to just sit here and give you the facts? That doesn't seem fair. Pudding? That meatloaf was vegetarian, by the way. Returning to the creeper, parenthesis Jack Ryder, close print. It only makes sense that the sequence of events so far is Beware the Creeper, the tale from Gotham Adventures number 58, then the off-panel Helgramite story that may or may not mirror the Brave and the Bold number 80, and then Adventures in the DC Universe number 17. The reason being that in Gotham Adventures number 58, Batman seems to be unaware that the creeper, parenthesis Jack Ryder, close print stopped using the anti-creeper, parenthesis Jack Ryder, close antidote, whereas the two just team up in the Adventures in the DC Universe book without mention of the antidote at all. And really, this is all we know about the creeper, parenthesis Jack Ryder, close in between his origin and joining the Justice League. And even then, we don't know much about him after joining the Justice League either. He has a few background appearances in Justice League Unlimited episodes such as Initiation, Panic in the Sky, and and Destroyer, as well as a few cameos in the show's tie-in book, such as issue number 20, which we previously deemed didn't fit canon in our episode on Shazam, issue number 29, and issue number 34. However, we do have one story from that run that features the Creeper, parenthesis Jack Ryder, which comes from the JLU tie-in book in issue number 10. The story, written by Adam Beechin, yes, that Adam Beechin, focuses on a group of villains called the Mad Men, who steal 
reveal a nuclear missile. In order to figure out how to track them down, the League enlists the help of the Creeper, who oddly enough makes a point of how much they push him to the sidelines. Much like Adventures in the DC Universe though, the JLU book is loose with continuity at times, partly due to juggling so many characters. And as a result, this run also needs a Willet Cannon episode. Trust me, the list exists, but for all intents and purposes, this issue does seem to fit continuity sometime before Supergirl's costume change in the show's final season. From there, we do see the Creeper, parenthesis Jack Ryan, one more time in a DCAU adjacent comic via Derek Friedolf and Dustin Nguyen's Justice League Beyond in God's We Trust storyline. The story suggests that he's now part of a team called the Circus of the Dead, which I think is a new thing for this comic that was never brought up again, but it includes Wildcat, Vixen, Dead Man, and our boy, the Creeper, parenthesis, Jack Ryder, closed parenthesis. Despite the lack of explanation given to the group, one can assume that it's made up of dead superheroes since Dead Man is obviously dead, Vixen was killed off in this continuity, and Wildcat was already getting pretty old 40 years earlier. So it seems that the Creeper, parenthesis Jeff, may have passed sometime between JLU and Batman Beyond. Luckily, while these books do seem to have adopted the DCAU as part of their history, they aren't necessarily canonical to that world. So perhaps the Creeper, parenthesis, is still running around out there somewhere, much like he is in the Batman Beyond Rebirth comics. But now that we have all of this laid out for you, it's time to bring it back around to the question Question of the day. What about the boa? Too much? Wait, no, that's not it. Now that you know everything that I know about the Creeper's history in the DCAU, I gotta ask, do you wish we got him earlier on and in a larger role like that promotional art suggested? Or are you content with what we got out of the character? I know Michael Brent wishes we got more Creeper. Michael is the man behind the Creeper parenthesis Jack Ryder close parenthesis meme. The Creeper parenthesis Jack Ryder close parenthesis. You can finally put your confused giveaway contest memes away. We've revealed the truth behind it all. Was as anticlimactic as you were hoping? Of course, before I go, I want to give a shout out to all of these lovely people who have helped support us on Patreon this month. If you don't see your name on there and would like for it to be slapped on the next time, you could go to patreon.com slash DCAU Watchtower and we'll get it on there for as low as a dollar. While you're there, be sure to check out all the other perks because there's a lot of cool stuff going on. Either way, whether you donate a dollar or a billion dollars, we super appreciate it because money is nice to have and it helps us do these things. And also, money is nice to have. <laughs> P.S. If you donate a billion dollars, we appreciate it more than the single dollar. Give me your money, Jeff Bezos. All that being said, I've been Maddie Washburn, this has been The Vanishing Point, and we'll continue to stay those things so long as you continue to stay you. I love you bunches, I'll see you in two weeks. Now go watch more of our videos and share them on all of your favorite social media sites like Reddit and Facebook and all that. Do it! Do it! Do it! Do it.